morning, everybody. Uh, very glad that you're here with us for this session. Um, I'm very excited to be introducing Stuart Duncan. I've been following Stuart's work for uh, a number of years uh, after being pointed to Stuart's TED Talk and uh, referred by a number of, of, of Minecraft fans and friends. Um, Stuart saw a need to create a safe space online for children with autism who were experiencing online bullying while playing Minecraft on online servers. Uh, Autcraft, the Minecraft server Stuart founded, has been described as one of the best places on the internet. The Autcraft, community, the Autcraft server is a community of children with autism and their families where they can convene and play, socialize, collabor and collaborate online. I believe Stuart has created a remarkable affinity space for the his server community. And please uh, give a warm welcome to a man I admire greatly, Stuart Duncan. Thank you. Um, so I've, I've attended a bunch of the, the talks yesterday and, and earlier today. And I, f I find that a lot of the people here are, they never aspired to be a speaker. They just did something that was amazing. And you want to hear about it. And they want to tell you about it. And so they speak. And so here we are. Um, I did something that was needed, and it became amazing. And so the more I thought about it, the more I realized that I just I have a story I want to tell you all. So I, I didn't prepare slides or anything. I hope you guys don't mind. I just want to tell you guys uh, an early morning story, first, my, the first talk here in this room. So um, yeah, in 2013, Minecraft was bigger than it is now. Uh, every YouTuber was talking about it and playing it, and it was out on the Xbox. And all the kids that were watching it wanted to be a part of that. They wanted to ha have a community to be friends and make you know, great big towns and villages with. And the children with autism, as you prob probably know, they don't socialize quite the same. When they get really happy, they get really, really happy. And when they get angry, they get really angry. And so when they tried to join these communities, what they found was it only took one incident. And the bullies and the trolls would target on them. Um, they would make it basically unplayable for these poor children to play. They would destroy everything they made, take everything they had, and, and spawn camp their beds. So every time that they died, they would show up again, and they would just kill them again and do it over and over again, so it was unplayable. The worst, though, was um, if they found out that any of these children did have autism, then it was far worse. They would basically tell these children that they were defects and rejects and, and retards and... They would tell these kids, some as young as six years old, that were just trying to play games with people for the first time, that their parents never wanted to have a broken child, so they should do them a favor and kill themselves. And you can imagine how hard that would be for a child whose first real social experience is, is to hear that. So a lot of the parents I found, because I was blogging about autism and stuff, that's why I have the name Autism Father online. Um, a lot of moms were blogging. I wanted to make sure people knew I was a dad. I was different. Um, so. I got, ended up with all these readers and social networks, and they, the parents, literally hundreds of them, hundreds all across social networks at this time, were reaching out to other parents saying, do you have an autistic child that loves Minecraft? And if you do, would they play with my child? And they were all doing this because their children were being bullied and they couldn't play in the public places that all the other kids were playing. And I realized that all these people were saying, I wish, I wish there was a place where our, our kids could play where they'd be safe, where that wouldn't happen. And it dawned on me that I could do that. <laughs> like, all these parents were saying, I wish. And I said, well, well, why don't you? And so I did. And I didn't, I never had a Minecraft server. I don't have an education in, you know, any sort of child support or education or any of that sort of stuff. I was a single dad of two kids. Um, my oldest son has autism. My youngest son does not. I have autism myself, by the way. Uh, and I had no money <laughs> because I was a single dad with two kids. But... I thought I had to do something. I had to help these guys. So I, I set up a server. It cost me $2.50. And it only hold, held five people. And I thought that would be enough. <laughs> and I posted it to Facebook just to my friends list just to see if in my circle that they would actually use it and if it would work, if I could do it. And in t 48 hours, I got 750 emails. Because I, I don't have that many Facebook friends. But it shot through the autism community like wildfire. And so I ended up upgrading over the week from the $2.50 package to the $80 package. <laughs> and the hosting company took pity on me and said, love what you're doing. We'll give you the $60 a month at, you know, discount. And I thought, oh, great, I can't afford that. Um, but people started to donate and stuff because 
that's the amazing part is the kids just took right to it. Like all these people, their parents even were worried that having, you know, dozens, even hundreds of autistic children all in one place, all playing together, all easily enraged, all misunderstanding each other often, all, you know, not trying things for the first time, which are often accidents and mistakes, that it was just gonna go terribly wrong. But that's not what happened. These kids supported each other and encouraged each other. And basically what, what I did to keep the server safe, to keep these children safe, was first of all, whitelist, you have to apply, which I said, like I said, I got 750 in two days. Um, but then also I monitor it. I'm constantly watching it. This is like the second time in six years that I haven't been sitting and staring at my screen and it's very odd and uncomfortable for me that I'm not watching them, making sure they're safe. But as, as I was sitting there watching for anything bad to happen, any arguments to start, anybody getting angry and calling somebody else's names or whatever, I was also watching for the good things that people did. And so on most servers you have administrators and moderators and ranks of authority, but on my server I wanted to do things a little differently and so I created ranks like buddy. So anybody that would see somebody else being lonely or saying I wish I had somebody to play with or can somebody you know, come and do this mini game with me, somebody that consistently said I'll play with you, then they got the buddy rank which allowed them certain permissions to be able to get around easier and go to these people. We did the helper rank which again is a little bit more helpful. You can actually teleport around. You can actually, you know, you do like commands like feed and stuff so that you can actually help people. The people who are, would drop everything to want help people do things, we'd give them the helper rank. And then there's senior helper, which are adults. Um, so that way the children know that the person that has that rank, not only are they helpful, but they're an adult. You can talk to them about stuff. And then of course admins, because you gotta have admins on a server administrating the place. And they have to be adults too. But the point was that these were all members of the community. I'm the only person that wasn't a member first. So all these parents, um, autistic parents of autistic children, um, just regular parents of autistic children, autistic adults that don't have children, and then aunts and uncles, grandparents, siblings, and the autistic children themselves. And they take care of the place just as much as I do. All the admins that I've chosen are all, some of them are parents that have never played Minecraft before being on my server, before joining Autcraft. They learned it. And I've always told them, I can teach you all the commands, I can teach you about Minecraft, I can teach you how to run a server, but I can't teach you patience and compassion and understanding. And so those are the ones that I watch for and they help me run the server. And on the 23rd this month, it'll be six years since I started it, which is unbelievable for me. Um, so we've watched some kids who have joined the server and caused problems because they were so anxious about starting high school. They were freaking out and we would talk to them and I've watched those same kids graduate high school and then go off to university and get their first jobs. <laughs> and they all come back. I had one child come back to me just last Christmas. He joined the server five years ago, came back last Christmas after being away for several years, and he says, I just wanted to come back and say thank you because I'm going to university in the fall and I just got my dream job at Lego. And before joining the server, he didn't talk to anybody he didn't join any groups or do any of that stuff. And being a part of a community where he's not afraid of somebody teasing him or spelling a word wrong or the wacky interests he had, like Lego, but I mean, who doesn't love Lego? He was, he was totally confident in sharing whatever. If he was afraid of high school, if he was afraid of making friends, if he was afraid of mas making mistakes, the rest of the community was exactly like that too. And they all supported him and encouraged him and he learned how to, you know, cope with that sort of thing, to not be afraid, to make friends, to be a friend. And he got his dream job. So, I mean, the server, I mean, if you ever decide to run a server like this, it's not gonna make you rich, but the rewards really are priceless. <laughs> There's really nothing quite like it. Um, so the, the first six months or so, the server grew really, really fast and it was unbelievable. But the problem was, I don't know if it's a problem, after about six months, a lot of the children started to feel very comfortable because it was a safe place and they were all sharing and, and caring about each other and encouraging. But because I was the guy that made them all feel safe, um, they all started coming to me with their depression and being bullied and abusive parents and feeling like an outsider, never being understood. And it got to the point where I was talking to, on average, two children per week who were suicidal. 
and they would come to me and at all hours of the day because it's worldwide. <laughs> By the way, uh, six years now, we have 11,000 children from over 50 different countries on the server. And it, they're all you know, either autistic or have a family member or something. And so I was talking to all these kids, and at the time, I had a full-time job. Um, like I said, I just wanted to help, and so I started a server while I was doing my job and taking care of my kids. And, and then I had kids in like the UK who were saying, I can only be on at 8 a.m., but I need to talk to you. And I was like, well, that's 3 a.m. for me. <laughs> so if I go to bed now and wake up in five hours. So basically, um, 2015, uh, I made the decision. I posted on Facebook, and I said, listen, I need to make a choice. I have to do this full time and be there for your kids and for you guys, or I need to go back to my job and support my family because I, my, my clients were suffering. I was late on everything. I kept telling my boss that I'm losing my mic. I kept telling my boss that uh, I had to go in the middle of meetings because somebody needed me right now, so I have to go. And either I had to focus on my job or I had to focus on the server, and people backed me up. It wasn't a lot, and I think in the beginning I made just about $1,000 from people supporting me on Patreon, and my rent was $960. Um, but shortly after that, in 2016, BuzzFeed wrote and, and called us the best place on the internet. They said how $2.50 went to saving lives, and because they had caught wind of all these parents saying, you know, my child is alive today because they were talking to Autism Father on a Minecraft server. And they wrote about it, and then the news came, and then we were in PC Gamer Magazine, and Good Morning America, and the Today Show, and it's blown up from there, and then I was invited to give a TED Talk, and long story short here. My mic keeps cutting out. So, we basically um, tried to just encourage the goodness in, in all the children. <sighs> They're all going through way bigger struggles than most people realize. Probably more than most of you people are going through in your daily lives. On June 5th, just passed, was my birthday. And unlike most people, I didn't go anywhere or do anything. I stayed on my computer and I talked to the kids on the server. Um, the people who do support me on Patreon, I have a Discord so they can actually voice chat with me, the owner of the server, which is a big deal for some of them. And I was talking to this one child. I don't even know how old he is. He's pretty young. But he is so hyperactive, like a million miles a minute. And that causes him to stutter. It causes him to yell. He literally picks up the mic and puts it in his mouth. And he uh, talks real loud. And all these things he does, he hates himself for. And he gets mad about it. And he apologizes profusely. I'm sorry for stuttering. I'm sorry for being loud. I'm sorry. And he, he'll, he'll call himself names over it. And so I'm talking to him on my birthday, and I'm like, listen, buddy, just take your time. Say what you need to say. I'm going to take all the time you need to be here, and I'll hear you out. And so he would tell me these things that he was building and doing and everything else. And in the middle of talking to him, I got an email. So I'm on, I'm on the server playing, and I'm talking to him, and an email shows up in the bottom corner, and, and it caught my attention, so I clicked on it. It was his mom. She was emailing me in the middle of the conversation because apparently while he was talking, it was coming through the speakers, not headphones, and she was listening in. And so she emailed me to say that he adores me and, and looks up to me, and, and so do his siblings, his two younger siblings, and they all love playing on the server. And then she said that her husband has early onset Alzheimer's and hasn't really been a part of their lives for the better part of a year now. And so it meant so much to her that they had this man, a good role model, who would be patient and understanding and take the time to talk to him. And that he was so happy to talk to. And, and then at the end, it said, happy birthday. <laughs> so I was in the middle of talking to him <laughs> and playing on the server. And I was basically just said, tell your mom that I said thanks. And he's like, for what? And I'm like, she'll know. <laughs> and then I said, give me a moment. <laughs> but I've heard so many stories like that from people who said they wouldn't even be here if it wasn't for the server and for me and for everybody else. On the flip side, I've also heard from other people who say, I don't like the way that Autism Father guy runs his server. But you have 11,000 kids, that's going to happen. Um, but to those people who don't like the way I run the server, I, my response is always this, I don't run the server. 
ever since the day I started it, when it got to be way too big for me to handle all by myself, I couldn't answer thousands of emails and be on the server watching it all the time. I've promoted from within. I told you, those parents, those children themselves. I, I've written um, letters of reference for some of these kids who were helpers in order for them to go off and get a job, and they got a job because they were a helper on the server. I'm like, that's not a job, but all right. <laughs> but all the decisions, except for one over the last six years, but all the other decisions on who we else we give to ranks to, who we, you know, promote to this or that. We also have other things that we do to celebrate them, like CBAs called Caught Being, caught being Awesome. <laughs> Anybody that's caught being awesome to somebody else, they get points and they can use those points in the store. We have Player of the Week, we have stuff like that. So all these decisions are made by people in the community, people that become helpers and senior helpers and, and admins. But also the rules. You know, if something isn't going right and we need to make a rule now be, to change things, then everybody decides on it because, and researchers have come to, 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 to study my server because of this. Having autistic parents of autistic children and neurotypical parents of autistic children and aunts and uncles and siblings and all these different people, every decision has to be made by all of us because we all have a different perspective. And I'm literally making this up as I go along. Nobody's ever done this before, so I'm gonna be wrong and I need to know about it. So if we decide we're gonna do something and somebody else says, actually, that doesn't work because of this, then I have to listen. And we all have to listen and that's how we make our, our decisions. And I, find, I found that a lot of autism charities and organizations and groups and things like that, they're always professors and lawyers and you know all these people who know but it's not a diverse group. It's not, you know, we have this perspective, we know about this, this is not how my child works. And with Autcraft we do, and I think that's why a lot of the community actually works. So to those people who say, I don't like the way he runs the server, you really don't like the way the server runs itself <laughs> because it's not me making the decisions, I just help. There was one decision I told you about that I, that I, I overruled everybody. All, all of my staff, volunteer staff, my family, my friends. And that was when I was making $1,000 a month, just enough to pay my rent, and I was quite literally starving. I was able to feed my kids, but not me at the end of the month. And they all said, you need to charge for the server. If parents see such benefits, that their kids are literally being saved, if their lives are being saved, and they're learning all this stuff on your server, they will pay. And I refused. <laughs> no matter how many t people told me, I refused, because Having talked to a lot of these kids, I realized that the ones who need it most are the ones who have parents that either can't or won't pay for it, no matter how cheap it is. They were not gonna play, pay for a video game for them to play. And so I refused, and I just kept asking those who could, <laughs> if you can spare not having a cup of coffee that month, you know, chip in $3 or something. And uh, it's never been a pay-to-play server. It's always been free, available. But it's also meant that I haven't been able to do everything I'd love to do. But as long as the kids always have a safe place. Being here is one of the things <laughs> that fits in that category. I have autism myself. Looking at all of you is extremely uncomfortable for me. <laughs> being out of my house is extremely uncomfortable for me. It actually ended up being the perfect job because I never had to leave my house. I just be at my computer all the time talking to kids on a screen. But I also told myself, that very first BuzzFeed article, he, the guy called me and I did the interview and I said, I kind of want it to be a secret so the trolls don't find us. But I realized that more parents and more kids will find the server and they'll have a safe place. So I said, okay, I'll do it. And then, and then TV cameras crew came to my grandparents' house to interview me in front of her Christmas tree. <laughs> that was a little weird. Um, and then TED Talks and then invited to be here and I said, you know what, I'm going to do this for the children. Started a server with no money and no time for the children, I'm gonna be here for the children. And the TED Talk and other stuff that I've done was primarily you know, to reach the parents and the kids but now here today I have another opportunity where I can reach educators and professionals and people who are way smarter and have way more resources than I do to say if I can do this, <laughs> There's no reason why you guys can't do this. I've had so many people approach me and say, why don't you do a server for people with Down syndrome or alcohol fetal syndrome or just in general, just in public where it's monitor and stuff. And I said, why don't you? 
I said, I'll help you. I'll teach you everything I know. I, I'll give you, I'll write out a book and tell you everything I know about it and how you can do it. But I'm not going to do it. I'm already busy. People say, what are you going to do next? And I said, same thing I'm doing now because those kids need me. And if I do something else, then I'm not there. So if I can encourage people, one thing from this story is I have no education on this. I, was a radio, I went to radio broadcasting in college. Mike feels natural. And I had no money and I had no time. I had a full-time job and two kids and I was on my own. Yeah, but people needed it and they said, I wish that this thing existed. So I did. My one, my one thing I hope you all take away from this is that if you see somebody needs something, just figure it out. It's never the right time. You never have enough resources. <laughs> you might not feel like you're smart enough. You figure it out. So hopefully I inspired you to figure it out too. We're done. Thank you.